Have you ever witnessed the reaction of someone when you mention the name of someone else they have had a bad history with? Perhaps there's still a residual bitterness within them towards that person and the mere mention of the name causes almost like a shadow to fall over their face. The name of the person you mention is bound up with the poisonous history between those two. The name of that ex-boyfriend or that former work colleague brings to the person's mind all that bad blood. The mere mention of that person's name is enough to ruin the other person's whole day. Today in the Gospel we hear of the power of the name of Jesus and how the very use of his name puts the demonic realm to flight. We saw a man driving out demons using your name, Lord, is the report of the apostles. And it has always been the case in the church that her battle with all the powers of the enemy are all waged under the name and authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. But why does the name of Jesus have such a powerful effect against the devil? It is because in that name is contained all the mission and mystery of who Christ is and what he came to do. In the Gospel of St. John, we are told, in the third chapter, God so loved the world that he sent his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. Saved from what, we might ask? What is it that God, in his great love for us, wants to save us from? Well, in the first letter of the same St. John, we are told, The reason the Son of God appeared was to undo all the works of the devil. And the work of the devil was to instigate a separation between us and God. The work of the devil from the very beginning was to cause sin to take root in the hearts of human beings. And as sin infected the human heart, so death and misery followed, oppressing the human body. All this activity of the enemy giving rise to this great separation between us and God. And it was to bridge the gap, to span that distance that God the Father sent his Son on a mission as Saviour to deal with those great enemies and problems of the human race, hell, sin, and death. For all hell, hell hates us, every sin wounds us, and death and misery ever oppress us. So what is it that Jesus has done as Saviour? For love of you, Jesus conquered all the powers of hell, crushed them, loosened the grip on us that sin gave them. Jesus drove them out. For love of you, Jesus heals the wounds of sin, your sin and the sins of the whole world. For love of you, Jesus conquers death and opens up for you a new life, a new way of living. He has conquered the powers of hell. He has washed away our sins with his blood and he has overturned death by his death on the cross for our salvation. And the very mention of Jesus' name reminds all the legions of hell of that definitive defeat they suffered when Christ died for us and our sins on the wood of the cross. And when Jesus rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven to the right hand of the Father, his earthly mission was now complete, but the mission of God's love was still unfolding in the world through the church. When Jesus returns to the Father's side, they send the Holy Spirit on mission to continue the growth and extension of the kingdom of God on this earth. The Holy Spirit is God's love poured out on all the baptized to fill us with the same love, the same power that filled Jesus. Filled us 
for the same mission as Jesus, to spread the word about God's great mercy and love to those who so desperately need to hear it. The Holy Spirit makes us members of Christ's body, members of his church, that we would shine in the world with the same light which flowed from Jesus and fills the whole world. Jesus, who said of himself, I am the light of the world, said of us, his disciples, you are the light of the world. The same light that is in him is meant to be in us, for it is the light of the Holy Spirit. And it's meant to push back the darkness and bring light and warmth to this cold world with so many hearts gone cold. Ask yourself, do you want to bring light to this darkened world? Do you want to bring a bit of warmth to this cold world? Then you need the Holy Spirit for that. And God is more than ready, willing and able to give him to you more abundantly if you but ask it of him. We're invited to believe in Jesus, to believe in his name and his power. And that will mean we will make him the centre and the purpose of all that we're about. We're invited to allow the Holy Spirit to give us that new life in Christ. St. Paul tells us that all those who are in Christ Jesus are new creatures, new men and women. And part of that newness is that we no longer live under the domination of fear, whether that be the fear of the devil, fear of our less than glorious past, or fear of death itself. And when we no longer live under the dominion of fear, we will find ourselves living under the dominion of love, under the power and influence of the Holy Spirit, who is given to us as the great gift of divine love, divine life, and divine peace. No wonder the devil submit and flee at the mere mention of the name of Jesus, for it reminds them of their total defeat and overthrow by the Lord's mission of love and mercy towards us. Now out there in the world today, so many hearts are in the grip of a terrible fear. And that fear, if we're honest, knocks on the doors of the hearts of us believers as well. But we are not to be dominated by that fear. Perfect love drives out fear, the scriptures tell us. And perfect love is, I'd say, a perfect definition of who the Holy Spirit is. Jesus died on the cross to save the world, to take away the sins of the world and reconcile us to the Father. But he died also so that we could become children of God, intimately and securely united to him by the gift of the Holy Spirit. Surely we who believe these things should therefore not live in fear. What have we to fear? Jesus is Lord. And Jesus says, in the world you will have trouble, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Right now, maybe someone listening is living in great fear of something. I encourage you to ask this simple question whenever that fear begins to claw away at your peace and your joy. Ask this question. In this moment of distress and fear, is Jesus still Lord? You bet he is. And so call on his name. Call on the name of Jesus. Call the Holy Spirit to come to your aid. And I assure you, the fear will flee. For as the Lord tells us through St. Paul in his letter to the Romans in chapter 10, if you profess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. No one who believes in him will be put to shame. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And you might add, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus will be safe.